Hey, Mr. War, you're acting kind of strange today. I am. Yes, I don't know. Hey, it's time to start another math lesson. What can I say? When I hear the word math, I just get really excited. Woohoo! It's another fun-filled day in paradise, my friends. Right here in Mr. Wara's little YouTube channel. And what are we doing today, Mr. Wara? Well, we are going to be looking at Lesson 7.4. Mr. Wara, you know you're talking to yourself. I know, and it's so much fun. Anyway, let's go ahead and look what our topic is. Our topic is, ooh, multiply fractions. Yeah. And our essential question, well... How can you use an area model to show the product of two fractions? Whew, that's pretty cool. An area model? I think I like that. And this is one of those investigates. Actually, this activity works really, really well if we did it face to face, as they say. So I'm going to do my very best to try to show this. Well, kind of virtually, or should we say in the computer world. Okay, my friends, let's take a look. This is a hands-on purple hands activity. So get your hands all purple. No, just kidding. We're going to have a lot of fun, my friends. It says, Jane is making reusable grocery bags and lunch bags. She needs three-quarter yard of cloth to make a grocery bag. A lunch bag requires two-thirds of the amount of cloth a grocery bag needs. Okay. How much cloth does she need to make a lunch bag? Ooh, what a doozy of a question. And what do we do when we get a question like that? We panic. No, we don't, Mr. War. We do not panic. So we unpack the problem. That's what we do. Yeah. Reread the problem and make sure that we understand what it's asking. It says that she needs three-quarter yard of cloth to make a grocery bag. But it says a lunch bag requires two-thirds of the amount of cloth a grocery bag needs. Okay? Two-thirds of the amount of cloth at the grocery. So we're taking two-thirds of that three-quarters. And it says, how much cloth does she need to make a lunch bag? Okay, so we're understanding that problem. And it says, find two-thirds of three-quarters. Material says you could use some coloring pencils. Yes, it looks like you could also use some paper. Okay, my friends, so we're going to take a look at A. And it says, fold a sheet of paper vertically into four equal parts. Using the vertical folds as a guide, shade three-quarters yellow. Okay. And do we want to move on to B? Not yet. So let's take this step by step. Now, I don't have paper, you know, where I can put in front of you, make it look really easy. So what I've done is I've actually drawn just looks like a square, probably a rectangle. And that's my piece of paper, as you can see right here. Hello there, Mr. Rectangle. Okay, and, and it says that we're going to be folding this sheet of paper vertically into four equal parts. So here I've shown you the arrow and the motion that we're going to be going vertically, like across, okay? In the direction of the arrow from the start of that arrow, that's how we're going to fold our paper. Cool? Yeah? All right. Now, if I did fold that paper, it needs four equal parts, but I'm going to fold that paper in half because something I've learned through many of these GOMAD lessons is that by folding something in half and folding it in half again will give me quarters. So here I have a half. And if I did fold that in half, then, of course, my paper would look something like this. It would look like half the amount, okay, fitting in here. And this is where my dotted line was, where the fold was, okay? So I'm going to make quarters by folding that one paper one more time in half. And if I did do that, then I would end up with my quarters. It'd be one more time, and I'd have two folds. One half, and then one half again would give me quarters. Now, it does say to shade three quarters of it yellow. Now, here's one quarter. But it says I need to do three quarters. Okay, three quarters might look something like this here. You can see where my folded lines are. And if you can see here down below, it may also look like what the girl is doing in our picture. Now, B says, fold the paper horizontally into three equal parts. So unlike before, when we were folding the paper like across vertically, now we're folding the paper upward in that direction, and that's going to be horizontally the actual paper. We're like folded in the direction up vertically, but we're actually folding it horizontally because we're going to be going in the opposite direction. And here it does say to do it into three equal parts. And there you see, I've done that three equal parts. Now with the folds being here and here. Now, it does say shade two-thirds of the yellow sections blue. Okay, let me get some blue. So, I have two sections ready to put in. Here's one. Ooh, 
nice. And here's number two, two out of the three thirds. Two, oh, I should say two out of the three, giving me two thirds. Look at the magic there. Look at the sections that overlapped. It turned a different color. Woo, Mr. Wara, that was sneaky. I kind of thought so. Anyway, look at that. So now we have an area model showing, yeah, two-thirds of three-quarters. So it says count the number of sections into which the whole sheet of paper is folded. How many rectangles are formed by all the folds in the paper? That's right. I know you were thinking. 12? Yep, it's 12, all right. 12 it is. Then it says, what fraction of the whole sheet of paper does one rectangle, one rectangle represent? Well, since we have 12 sections and now we have that overlap, there were some of the green ones. Oh, but oh, it's actually what, what one rectangle, I'm sorry, one rectangle would just be 1 12th. That's right. If there's 12 equal pieces, I'm sorry, I was jumping ahead. Let's keep on bringing on down. Now, D says count the sections that are shaded twice and record the answer. Well, we don't even have to even think about which ones are shaded twice because the color turned green. Remember? Let's take a look. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! You can see where the green is. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah! And I count six. So we'll say six out of 12. Or another way we could write that is, you guessed it, one half. So Jane needs six twelfths or one half yard of cloth to make a lunch bag. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, drawing conclusions. Explain why you shaded two thirds of the yellow sections blue rather than shading two thirds of the whole. Well, actually, I shaded two thirds of the whole. We didn't have to count those sections, so let's take a look at that. So in my model, I actually showed two thirds of the whole. But we weren't actually counting this section here. This is actually two thirds of three quarters. We're not counting those two. I could have left those out, but I wanted you to see the color change. That's why I left the blue in. Uh, but to explain that, well, I'm going to say since we, the problem said that we were finding two thirds of three quarters, not two thirds of the whole. Okay, that's why um, I really only needed to just find two thirds of the yellow sections. But we went ahead and did that. But let me go ahead and answer it that way. Uh, since I'm finding two thirds of three quarters, so I only needed, let's see, I needed to just shade two thirds of the yellow sections. Okay, so we go in and it says, analyze what you are finding if a model shows one half of a sheet of paper shaded yellow and one third of the yellow section shaded blue. Blue on blue. Yes, you know what? That is a great question or statement of analyzing. Well, like our problem we just did, we took two thirds of three quarters. That meant we were finding two thirds of that section. So two thirds of the yellow section, which was three quarters. And here is saying that now we have the half, which is yellow and the one third. OK, we're going to take one third of that yellow section. We're going to shade it blue. That means we're taking one third of one half, one third of one half or just one third times one half which is equal to one sixth. I am finding one third of one half or one third times one half, which is equal to one sixth. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Birds master. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, it's all about make connections. It says you can find a part of a part in different ways. Marguerite. And James both correctly solved the problem one third times three quarters using the steps shown. Use the steps to show how each person found one third times three fourths. Okay, Marguerite says that she says shade the model to show three quarters of the whole. Okay, I think we could do that. Very nice. Now, how many quarter pieces did you shade? I think I did three. Did you see three? I saw three. To find one third of three quarters, circle one third of the three quarter pieces that are shaded. Oh, I get it. If I took one third of the three quarters, see that would be this part right here. There you go, because that's one third, two thirds, three thirds. So one third of the three quarter pieces here is listed. So what part of the whole is one third of the shaded pieces? 
of the whole. Ah, good one. It's one quarter because there's four equal pieces and that's one piece of the four. So that would make that a quarter. So one third times three fourths is? Yes, it's one quarter. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Bringing it on to Mr. James. Now, James said, shade the model to show three quarters of the whole. There we go. Now, it says divide each quarter piece into thirds. Okay, each quarter piece into thirds. I think I might be able to do that. Okay, so I'm writing that one to thirds. So I'm just going to make my line come all the way out of here so you can see what I'm doing. Each section is set into thirds. So maybe three equal pieces for each one of those. Yeah, you know. This is actually kind of fun. It said to do it to the whole, so I'm doing it for all of them. See how I created that? What part of the whole is each small piece? Okay, I just need to call the, count the equal pieces. So if I have three in here, that would be three, six, nine. It would be 12, but 12 pieces. But part of the whole as a fraction would be one twelfth. So one twelfth. To find one third of three quarters, circle one third of each of the three one quarter pieces that are shaded. How many one twelfth pieces are circled? Oh, okay. So I could go ahead and circle this one here. There's one. Got another one over here. That's two. That's my one third of each of these quarter pieces. And I could do another one here. Okay. I don't know if you can see those. It would be this one here, that one right there, and this one here. So there's three. And so how many 1 12 pieces are circled? Well, we circled three of the 1 12 pieces. Therefore, yeah, it's going to equal 3 twelfths or 1 quarter. Wow, that was cool and it worked out the same. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Giddy up. That's what I say. Giddy up, horsey. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Quick, Mr. War, before you do something really weird. Hey, hey, hey. Now it says, pose a problem that can be solved using the equation above. All right, so it can be any problem. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to come up with a problem like that. Oh, uh, let me think. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, yes, that's how I think best when I sing. Well, you know what? They look like pizzas up there to me. So why don't we just make a pizza? I love pizza problems. So, well, let's just say there was three quarters of a pizza left over. And then our friend Troy... You're famous. Eight one third of what was left. How much of the entire pizza did Troy eat? That's right. So let's go ahead and write our problem. Now it's time for Sharon Show. That's right. Good old Sharon Show. Hey, you got? Do you have a math board there at home? A nice math board? Yeah. Maybe you should get it out. Yeah. Okay. Use the model to find the product. Okie dokie. We did one of these before, so let's just get through this, my friends. It says three-fifths times one-third. Okay, so I'm going to show you this way. I hope this doesn't confuse you. But you see, that's like to me one-fifth right there. And then in yellow, you see two-fifths. Because there's one more down below, and that one is three-fifths. And that, my friends, right there is three-fifths of this one hole. They have highlighted yellow. Okay, and if I take blue, I want it to crisscross. So blue, this would be one third of the whole, which is this strip here. Now, I'm not going to be looking at the two bases I just highlighted down below. I'm not going to be looking at those. Okay, now, can you see where it turned green? Yeah, okay. And so that right there is where they actually crisscrossed, where they were shaded on top of each other. That's how I got the green. We can ignore, if you if you like, for the sake of this activity, so you don't get confused, you can ignore this. This is not important to us right now. Nor is this amount here. What we're focusing in on is that right there. Okay, that's what we're interested in. So that will be three then of, and we have a total of 15 equal rectangles there. So that's three of 15, which happens to equal one fifth. We get to the one-fifth because, of course, dividing out by a common factor, 3 has common factor of 3 with 15. They have a common factor of 3. So we divide that 3 out, we end up getting one-fifth. Very cool. Very nice. Now this one here, maybe we'll do a little bit different. We won't do the highlighting. I just love the green. I like, I just love how it turns green. Okie dokie. Circle two-thirds of three-fifths. 
So on this problem, they've already shown the three-fifths shaded. So I like that. I can see that. Nice. Now I'm going to circle two-thirds of that amount. Well, that's really easy because if there's only three shaded here, we could say that each section then would be one-third. So if I'm going to circle two-thirds, I'm circling this amount right here. And what, that, what I'm saying then, two-thirds of the three-fifths. But remember, this is based on our entire whole. So two-thirds then of three-fifths is in essence really two-fifths. Because we would have here, if we multiply across, we would have six over 15. But that's equal to, and if we divide out a common factor of three from both the numerator and the denominator, we end up with two-fifths, okay? So this is one, two out of the five altogether. So we represented the three-fifths, then we took two-thirds of the three-fifths. What are these two unit fractions when you look at the whole? And that's how we figure that out. Oh my goodness, yes, it's the music, woohoo! Hey, you know what, my friends? It's time to say goodbye. Yes, it's been a great, great opportunity to do some more math with you guys. Yeah. Live long and prosper. Yeah.